Well, we will. Thanks very much for stopping on here this afternoon. Uh, don't forget, by the way, the last quarter-final playoff. That is this evening in Longs. It is Ireland against Argentina. It'll be a very close game, that as well. You can see it on ITV2. It is also live in Ireland on Ulster Television. And uh, all the day's best action in the highlights here on ITV. Check your local listings for the exact time. And as Will has been saying, Wales against Australia. Cardiff, we are on the air from 2.20 on Saturday. And quarter-final Sunday is a very, very big viewing day on ITV indeed. We go South Africa, England live from Paris. That's from 12.30. And France against either Ireland or Argentina from Dublin. Followed by Scotland and the All Blacks from Murrayfield. What a day, and it's all on ITV. So England and Scotland have been too good for the Southern Hemisphere today. But, well, the Springboks and the All Blacks are a very different proposition indeed. Bye-bye, children. Fascinating stuff, hasn't it? Uh, so much to talk about, so much to think about. The cheers, the tears, well, where do you start? Wonderful stuff. If you would like to find out more about the Rugby World Cup, please visit our website, which is in partnership with Ericsson at www.itv-rugby.co.uk. You may like to know that two CDs featuring the Rugby World Cup theme music are now available in record shops. After the break, the records of 70 women patients, all treated by the same doctor, are to be examined by the hospital where he worked. And soccer growth, Sunderland's plans to expand the Stadium of Light, already the region's biggest football ground. One reason people in the Mediterranean enjoy life, whatever their age, is their diet of fresh fish, vegetables and olive oil. <laughs> Olivio, join Club 18 to 130. Is it ready to wear straight from the wash? Not with all these creases, it's not. Then you're ready for new Lenore Fabric Enhancer. The difference is clear. Ordinary softness stay on the surface. Lenore Enhancer penetrates, smoothing fibers like a liquid iron for easier ironing. And sometimes no ironing at all. Ready to wear? Ready for anything. New Lenore Fabric Enhancer. Give your wash an Alpine freshness. With new Aerial Alpine tablets. There's been so much technical talk about digital television recently, some of it rather confusing. Most people though just want to know what's on offer and what's the best way of getting it. Well now there's a handy little booklet that tells you just that. It's called What's All the Fuss About? It's very clear and easy to follow with none of the usual technical gobbledygook. It'll even tell you exactly how you could receive digital TV through your existing aerial and television. It's absolutely free, and it'll be coming through your letterbox soon, so do look out for it. Unlike a lot of things that come through your letterbox, this really is worth reading. The What's All the Fuss About Guide to Digital Television. Look out for it. Rob has taken Karen away on the cheap. If he'd booked a Thompson Gold holiday, there wouldn't have been thousands of screaming kids. Does this mean Karen is remembering her idyllic holiday with her ex-husband, Phil? Probably. Is she thinking about his superior skill in the bedroom? Probably. Will Karen leave the hotel under the cover of darkness, fly home and change the locks? Probably. The thing is, Rob, if you want to spend time together, it's details like no kids that count, and Thompson Gold gets them right. Thompson, look after number one. Let number one look after you. Mm. 
you do an inadequate car. Well, I think it's time you tried the new Nissan Primera. We're trying to trace this man. He grabbed bottles of spirits at Victoria Wines in Headingley Hole in Sunderland and ran from the shop without paying. He's in his early 30s and had a thin, drawn face. If you can help with this or any other offence, ring Crime Stoppers on 0800 treble 5 treble 1. You don't have to give your name and you could qualify for a cash reward. It's the disease every parent dreads. A vaccine exists, so why can't we use it? Tonight with Trevor McDonald at 10.15. As far as I'm concerned, Jim Tiger is dead in that From Beyond the Grave, Thursday at 9 on ITV. Taggart. <laughs> Tying teas and sun life, helping you plan for tomorrow. Hello there, it was a nice day in Brompton on Swale. It was a nice day for artistic cameramen as well, but a big chill in the air. However, come the weekend, we can see from the Metaverse wind flow chart, we've got the old hurricane, the ex-hurricane Irene, she's lurking out there to the west. Usually there's a fair bit of warm air connected with old hurricanes, and I think we're going to start taking the winds in more from the south as we go through Saturday into Sunday. So at least the rain should get a bit warmer. Well, this evening, there's a gusty old wind out there, gusting up to gale force in places, firing one or two showers around the area. But I think, come through the night, most of us are dry, and it's another coldish night, but that breeze and the cloud, keeping those temperatures well above freezing, I think the lowest, out in the sticks, up in the hills there, around about four Celsius. Now, tomorrow starts on a bright enough note, still a trinkle of showers around, still that blustery breeze into the afternoon. We're not going to break any temperature records again. I think top temperatures around about 11 or 12 degrees Celsius. Most of us staying dry, I think, through the afternoon, but come tea time, change in the weather coming along, some rain into most places, some of it heavy. For a seven-day regional forecast, call the Tyne Tees weather line on 0336 405 440. <laughs> Evening, this is Time Tees Television. Now, Northeast Tonight with Mike Neville. Good evening, welcome to Wednesday's edition of Northeast Tonight. Our main headlines this evening. Medical call, hospital to examine records of 70 dead patients of a controversial doctor. Going up, Success Club Sunderland announced expansion plans for the Stadium of Light. Health scare, breast cancer is a killer and it can affect men as well. And later in the programme, find out why for this group of primary school children, Christmas has come early this year. All that, and have you made your promise yet? Jason Beresford will be with us later as we ask whether you've attempted to make your mark on the millennium. Have a pen and paper ready. But first, let's take a look at the day's main news stories with Pam Royal. Thanks, Mike. Good evening. A hospital in the region has been asked to examine the medical records of 70 of its patients. All of them died and all were treated by a disgraced doctor. Surgeon Richard Neal was recently suspended by the General Medical Council and was previously struck off the medical register in Canada following the death of a patient there. North Yorkshire Police are already investigating the death of three of the patients at the Friaridge Hospital in North Allerton. The GMC hearing isn't expected to get underway until the middle of next year. Police are continuing to question a 14-year-old boy following a siege in Newcastle. Dozens of armed officers were called to the double discount store in Scotswood. A teenager who was armed with a knife was holding a woman shopkeeper hostage. After two hours, police arrested a teenager. The 21-year-old shopkeeper was taken to hospital where she was treated for shock and an injury to her hand. 
Newcastle United supporters who are angry about massive rises to seat prices at St James's Park are planning a stand-up protest. 4,000 season ticket holders face a 271% increase to keep their existing seats. Over 200 fans have formed an action group to fight the move. As part of their protest, they're now planning a stand-up demonstration before the club's next home game against Derby County on Monday night. Now, it may only be October, but Christmas has come early this year for a group of school children in the region. There's no sign of Father Christmas yet, but for the pupils of Osbaldwick Primary School in York, carol singing is already in full swing. In order to raise funds for new books, the children are recording their very own CD of all their favourite festive songs. David Harrison went along to listen. <laughs> jumping up and down thinking we're going to be like the steps you know we're going to be pop stars and all of them today have said are we going to be on top of the pops and I said well if we sell enough so um, yeah they're all really excited and getting into it they've worked really really hard and uh, it's just brilliant really good it was good to see all the like things that you using to make to make the tapes which was your favorite i went to manger what was it like being pop singer good what do you like to be when you go out Well, have you made your promise yet? I'm talking, of course, about ITV's Year of Promise, which was launched earlier this week. It's an opportunity for every one of us to play a part in making this region a better place, a real chance to make a mark in the millennium. All we're asking for is just a little bit of your time for individuals, groups or companies to make a simple promise that will help create a better future. I will always be accountable to my family. I will learn Spanish. I will sponsor a third world child. I will ask my girlfriend to marry me. I will try to be less late for everything. I will get to know my neighbour and I will know when she needs my help. I will be more open-minded. I will learn to swim. I will continue to encourage the development of youth theatres in the North East. It's as easy as that. And just to prove it, lots of you have already registered your promises. And some very interesting ones there are too. Jason Beresford has been keeping tabs on some of them. So how's it going, Jason? Yes, yes. I've got to go, got to go. <laughs> Sorry, Mike, that was, uh, that was my mother. She phoned to promise that she, uh, she wouldn't phone me at work anymore. So she clearly hasn't got the idea, but fortunately, lots of people have. Let me tell you about a few of them. Um, there's a Mrs Hughes from Middlesbrough who's promised to overcome her fear of needles and donate blood. And there's another lady, Mrs Elliot in Yarm, who's also promised to become a blood donor. So good news for vampires. Miss Wilson from York has phoned to say she'll take her dogs, Rosie and Butch, to visit people and make them smile. And a teacher from Knaresborough has promised to inspire her students to create excellent artwork. So lots of people already getting very involved. So just to remind us, Jason, how do we register our promises? Well, Mike, there are two ways. Um, one way is to pick up one of these registration forms and pop it in the post. You can get these from Barclays Bank, Curry's, Dixon's, Iceland, The Link, PC World, at Jakarta and BP Garages, or you can register through the internet on the special ITV Year of Promise site. And that address is www.itv.yearofpromise.co.uk. 
Now, I know you can't officially register a promise by telephone, Jason, but there is an information line. Tell us about that. That's right. Yeah, if you've got a question about the Year of Promise, then of course give us a call here. But also, if you are thinking of registering, give us a call anyway, just to let us know what you're up to. That telephone line is 0191 230 2230. One more time, that's 0191 230 2230. And of course, all that information is on Teletext as well. It's text page 697. Thanks a lot, Jason. Thanks very much. And I'll give you that number again at the end of the programme. We'll take a break now. We'll be back soon with more news, sport and features from all across the region, including cause for concern. Breast cancer affects thousands of women in the region, but did you know it can affect men as well? Getting together is always rewarding. Even more so if you join new BT together. You get up to three hours of inclusive call time every month. Simpler, lower prices. And half price additional line connection. All of this all in one for just eleven ninety nine a month, including your line rental. Especially E.T. He was so funny. Okay, okay. Bye, Eddie. And give my regard to your alien friend. Such a vivid imagination. Get BT to go. Call 0800 055555 and stay in touch. At Comet, we're lowering our prices. Forever. We've started by lowering the price of over 300 top products. And as we continuously check over 15,000 prices every week, we can guarantee that the Comet price will always be low. So, we won't need these anymore. Lowering our prices forever? That's all it says. Water you choose power gen gas and electricity instead of British gas, you could save money as much as £42 a year. Call 0500 24 0500 to start saving on your power. It's Frank from Frank's Factory Flooring. Did you know if you've got an average size three bedroom house, I can carpet the lot for only £299. Where else can you get a deal like that? You tell me! Frank! Frank's factory flooring! I love carpets, me! It takes a lot to get me out of bed in the morning. No! Me boss says it's because I'm a lazy trout. I might not be very good in the morning, but I know what is. Crispy Kellogg's cornflakes and iced cold milk. I'd be rubbish without them. Early again, yes! Have you woken up <laughs> to Kellogg's cornflakes? Someone stole your free Cartoon Network toy. Free Cartoon Network toys with every kid's fun meal. There's ten sets to collect. Chicken. Only at Little Chef. Welcome back. Coming up in a moment, how breast cancer can affect men as well as women. And there's a lot more for you before we leave you at uh, 6.30, including... Basket case. As the frosts approach, more timely tips from our gardening expert. Swiss roll struggling magpies fly out for their latest European challenge. Priscilla's problem, the mystery pelican that's been nursed back to health. And we'll have Bob Johnson's weather prospects later. He says it's going to get warmer. October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and one of the ways it's being marked is by a pink ribbon. 
More women in this country die from breast cancer than in most other developed nations in the world. No one knows why. But did you realize it can also affect men? Jonathan Burrell has been finding out how they cope with the problem. This is a typical suburban coffee morning, but one of these people here has breast cancer. Two years ago, Doug Watson found out he had the condition. I found a small lump uh, on my right breast. Uh, didn't think much about it at the time. I just thought it was a cyst or maybe a blind spot. Uh, part of the reason uh, of that thinking, I think, is because I've never been ill in my life, and I've never been in hospital, and I just thought, oh, it'll go away. But uh, over the course of a year, it got a lot larger, and uh, I put it off because, well, going to the doctors, because uh, I had a big wedding coming up in Hungary, and I was taking all the family with me. And I just thought, well, we'll, we'll leave it for now, as men do and uh, go off to the wedding and uh, jump the bridge when I came back. Unfortunately, it did get uh, a lot worse, uh, probably during the wedding, uh, and it, it went from being a lump to a large lump, which had broken out as if it was a, an abscess. And what I did was I stuck a plaster over it to hide it from my wife, mainly, and carried on. And then uh, we got back from the wedding and my wife naturally saw this big plaster on my right uh, breast and ordered me to the doctors. The doctor, who was a personal friend, uh, Graham, uh, looked at me and looked at my uh, sort of weeping wound and said, Doug, why didn't you come and see me earlier? With that, he rang the RVI from the surgery and booked me in for the next day. And it took about 20 minutes uh, for all the tests with this biopsy. And the, Jonathan came back and said, Doug, he said, I'm sorry to tell you, you've got cancer of the breast. With that, I think I must have turned um, slightly white. Of course, I'd gone from work to the, have the biopsy done. I went back to work. And, of course, the war, I walked through the door and everybody said, what's wrong? And I couldn't tell anybody. And, uh, um, sorry, um, it's uh, quite emotional to uh, talk about, you know. Anyway, I came home and I didn't tell my wife either. It was um, quite a shock. Um, when I should really think you were going to die, you know. I had to go in the hospital to have uh, the chemo. It made uh, food taste like um, cardboard. Um, it made a lot of the people that I was in with very, they were sick, couldn't keep any food down. Also, you had no immune system whatsoever. So if anybody came to see me when I got home, if they had any bugs at all, they had to stand outside of the patio doors and talk to me through the glass. Then I went into radiotherapy which uh, had to go for about 16 weeks, but it only took uh, about 10 minutes of time uh, to have the treatment, uh, which didn't affect me a great deal. Uh, tickled a little bit with this laser going through my, my right breast. <laughs> but I thought to myself, well, it's doing me good here, so you've got to put up with these little um, sort of, you know, things that are not um, making you feel nice. Uh, then after the radiation, uh, I came on, I was feeling a lot better. And the only thing was I had a very large hole in my right breast where the uh, actually tumor had been and everything collapsed. It's changed my outlook on life. Uh, uh, after the, well, after I got over all the treatment, the uh, chemo and the radiotherapy, they did ask me about counselling, but my family is extremely supportive. And I didn't think I needed it. You know, I could talk to myself and consult my family more, which I didn't do before. And I feel fine now. Uh, I'm in remission, as I say. 
uh, but I feel fine and I'm being positive about it and I'm looking forward to the future. Well, with me now is Dr. Aji Betty. Aji, just how common is breast cancer in men? Well, male breast cancer is not a very common thing, Mike, especially when you compare it to female breast cancer. There are only about 200 cases per year in the UK, but unfortunately about 90 of those are fatal. And this, I think, is the main thing about male breast cancer. If you look 